In this video, we're going to look at emotional intelligence interview questions and answers so that you can demonstrate high emotional intelligence in your interview. I'll also share some key things you'll need to avoid and some actions you can take to increase your emotional intelligence in different areas. I'm Amri Celeste, an HR recruitment specialist and an interview coach with over 10 years hiring experience. And I make videos to help you secure the job that you want. So if you're job hunting, do like and subscribe. So first, emotional intelligence is the ability to be aware of your own emotions and to regulate and manage them so that you can have the best life experience and connect with others in the most effective way. Emotional intelligence is important for any job that interacts with other people, which I imagine is almost every job. So unless you'll be working in total isolation, it helps to demonstrate emotional intelligence in your interview. Now, there are some jobs where they might assess emotional intelligence a little more closely, such as HR, therapy and counselling related roles, but it's also highly effective in so many other roles such as customer service, complaints handling, sales is another one. It's very difficult to be an exceptional salesperson without the ability to connect with others effectively. So Daniel Goleman is the American psychologist that helped to popularise the concept of emotional intelligence and these are the five elements of emotional intelligence according to him. So the first is self-awareness. A couple of examples of self-awareness interview questions are what is your biggest area for improvement? And another one is, can you tell me about a time when you failed? So these questions are not only assessing for the actual answer, like the area for improvement and what the failure was, but they're also assessing for your perception of these things. So for example, one person might have a goal to get promoted within a year, and if it takes three years, they might consider that to be a failure, but someone else might have a goal to get promoted within five years and get promoted within four. So even though it took longer, they may not see that as a failure, even though it's essentially the same goal, just with a different time expectation, which changes each person's perception of failure in this instance. Instance. So you'll be showing high emotional intelligence if you can demonstrate that you understand different perspectives of the same thing. What to avoid? If you're highly self-aware, then you can assess yourself accurately. So if someone is overly modest and they're always putting themselves down or downplaying their big achievements, or on the other side, someone is overly arrogant and come across as very entitled to the job, then they wouldn't be demonstrating self-awareness. So I answered the question, tell me about a time when you failed in my behavioral interview questions and answers video, where I gave an example of somebody who was set a revenue target that they didn't meet. But the important part was that they went on to explain that from one perspective, it's a failure because they didn't meet the target, but they also gained multiple skills in their hard effort to meet the deadline and reach the revenue target. So skills like networking, meeting new contacts and creative new ways of working that they hadn't considered before. So from a shifted perspective, there were some successes, it just depends on how you look at it. What to include in your answer to show self-awareness. To show self-awareness in your answer, let's take the failure question for example. So what you want to do here is show vulnerability. So show something that you really did struggle with in your life. Um, so don't give anything like, you know, I haven't, I have never had any failures because I'm a perfectionist or, or anything like that. Um, I hear that more times than you would think. Um, just to remember that if you're giving an example of something that you struggled with, remember to bring it back to how you overcame it or how you're working to overcome it and what you've put in place to foster that. Actions to increase self-awareness. You could also include a couple of solid activities you do to check your self-awareness, like keeping a diary or a journal or taking time for quiet self-reflection each day. Self-regulation. Self-regulation is the ability to understand and control or regulate our emotional response. So first and foremost, you need to be able to understand that it is an emotional response and recognize that many people present feelings as facts when they're feeling highly emotional. For example, um, someone might have an opinion that a person is rude and state that as a fact and then argue against the idea that that's just their opinion and that other people may not see that person as rude. A couple of examples of interview questions relating to self-regulation are, how do you handle difficult colleagues? Or give me an example of a time when you've had to deal with a particularly difficult colleague or coworker, or describe the most difficult person you worked with. Another is, tell me about a time when you got angry at work. So what to include in your answer to show your ability to self-regulate. So give an example of a situation that triggered a negative emotion and then show how you stop that negative emotion from turning into a negative response. For example, let's say that you had a colleague that was always late or didn't complete tasks properly and that created more work for you or for the rest of the team. 
You can explain that you found this really annoying because it didn't demonstrate teamwork, which is important to you. But you recognize that you were feeling irritated and you realized that you didn't know what was causing the lateness or the poor work quality. So your approach was to communicate with them in a way where you were not accusing them, but you were honest with them about the situation and the way that it was affecting you. You asked questions and you made some suggestions for things that they could do in the future. This shows your emotional maturity and your emotional control. What to avoid? Pretty easy with this one, you just wanna avoid blame because when you're answering questions like these, you're demonstrating self-regulation, not regulation of other people or other people's emotions. So whether the person was at fault or not, you need to demonstrate that you assessed what you could have done differently. So avoid using your answer as an opportunity to relive the situation and blame the other person. Actions to increase your ability to self-regulate. A couple of things you might do to demonstrate your ability to self-regulate are things like holding yourself accountable, taking responsibility for a situation where you did something wrong and give examples of this, but also active exercises to practice staying calm, whether exercising, breathing, yoga, meditation, or simple awareness of your feelings when you're experiencing high emotional responses. If you're getting value from this video, do click like. It makes a huge difference and ensures that this video will show up for more people needing help with emotional intelligence interview questions on YouTube. Motivation. A motivation related interview question could be something as simple as how do you stay motivated? I would say motivation falls under the last category of self-regulation because your ability to stay motivated is something that needs to be regulated and managed. So if you think about any idea that you've had with a burst of motivation, like starting a business, a new diet, reading every day, working out, in majority of cases, it's a phase that doesn't last without careful self-regulation. But by tracking and monitoring your plans, you can keep steady motivation. But it takes work to develop that mental perspective that allows you to constantly find things to keep your motivation high. But if you can do that, it shows high emotional intelligence. What to include in your answer to show self-motivation? So some of the things you can include in your answer are things like actively seeking out ways to shift your perspective to the most positive aspect such as books or online content that align with a motivated outlook, but also regularly reviewing your career milestones to show that you keep track of where you are against where you want to be. Another thing to demonstrate is optimism. I find that people that are consistently successful over a long period of time, they have a natural habit of optimism or they develop that habit. There's a quote I love by Jim Carrey that explains why optimism is so important. He said, I'm just making a conscious choice to perceive challenges as something beneficial so that I can deal with them in the most productive way. And do you think that you could consistently handle challenges or stay motivated if you saw every challenge as something that was almost impossible to overcome? A couple of quick ways to increase motivation. One is to use 90 day goals in intervals, write them down, visualize them and try to make sure they are smart, which is specific, measurable, attainable, realistic and time bound. Also, own your success and this means taking responsibility for celebrating successes in life actively look for things to be grateful for and celebrate such as sticking to a workout plan or diet meeting new people finishing a book when you start to do this it automatically increases your gratitude which is another great way to increase motivation and let me know in the comments if you have any questions about emotional intelligence interview questions empathy Empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. But when you're doing that, it doesn't mean that you're getting emotionally wrapped up and carried away with that person or what they're going through. It's just understanding. So that when you're interacting with them or making decisions that affect them, you're doing it with understanding. So some empathy related questions are questions like, what do you do when someone comes to you with a problem? Or tell me about a time when this has happened. But they could also be about how you impacted others emotionally. For example, tell me about a time when you've coached someone through a difficult time. Tell me about a time when you had to deliver difficult news. What to include in your answer to show empathy. When you're answering empathy related questions, always try to include how you put yourself in someone else's position mentally and what that did for you. So how it shaped how you interacted with them or things that you did or didn't do due to showing empathy towards that person. An example I used in my behavioral video that I mentioned earlier was a person who had a colleague whose quality of work had declined and it turned out that they were going through a divorce. So they decided to take an empathetic approach and give that person the time and the space that they needed to improve their work. 
So any examples where you can show the empathy behind your actions is a strong example. Actions to increase empathy. So this can include things like paying attention to nonverbal communication. So body language, eye contact, facial expressions, gestures, posture and body orientation, like someone turning away as they're speaking or being protective or defensive by crossing their arms. These type of actions give you an idea of what someone might be feeling without them actively speaking words. If you do struggle with interview questions and answers, you can grab a copy of my top 20 interview answers guide. It's totally free and it's packed with answers to difficult questions like, can you give me an example of a time when you thought outside the box? How do you handle pressure at work? And what would you do if we didn't give you the job? Plus many more. I've also covered what you should be asking your interviewers at the end of your interview. So as I mentioned, it's free. You can get yours by clicking the link in the description below this video. Social skills. Strong social skills are a key indicator of emotional intelligence. Some people have a natural ability to socialize and this is something you can develop even if it doesn't come naturally. So your ability to socialize with someone is an indicator of emotional intelligence. Also your understanding of what people like, what motivates them and what they find desirable. Some interview questions related to social skills are, tell me about a time you had to convince or persuade a client, a customer or a manager round to your way of thinking. Another one is how do you build relationships at work? Some examples you can give to show emotional intelligence relating to socializing is conflict resolution. So anytime you solved a conflict at work. I also give a full example answer to that one in my top 10 situational interview questions and answers video. So I'll also link that video in the description below this video, how to demonstrate social skills in your interview. One trick to socialize well is to ask questions, questions that show your interest in the company, the role, the values, and particularly questions about your interviewer and their journey. I give some examples of questions that you should be asking your interviewer in your interview in my top 20 interview questions and answers guide. Another socializing tip is offering compliments, genuine compliments where appropriate, not too many. Uh, one of the most popular books on improving social skills is how to win friends and influence people. There's a whole section in there about being generous with praise, the value of charm and being genuinely interested in other people because these are powerful skills when it comes to socializing. Actions to improve social skills. You can also talk about anything you do actively to build and continuously improve your social skills, such as communication courses, networking, and this could be at work or at events outside of work. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, do like and subscribe, tap the notification bell so that you know when a new video is ready for you, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.